we're looking at the subject forbidden to preach. That's what they were sent forth to do, go into all the world and preach. But <clears throat> this was a particular and a unique circumstance. And just like the scriptures of the Old Testament writ were written for our instruction and our admonition, and for our example, these things were written for us to understand that the Spirit of God is in sovereign control, and He does that which He wills with His own. Uh, and it says in verse 5, the churches were established in the faith and increased in, the number, da in number daily. So while this was going on, uh, the increasing of the numbers and the establishing of faith, it says in verse 6 of chapter 16 of Acts, now when they had gone through, uh, throughout Pergia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they assayed to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. They wind up in Philippi over in Greece, having crossed over from Turkey to Greece and went from, uh, went from Turkey over into Europe from Asia, the portion of Asia, to over to Europe. And the thing uh, then settles on one certain woman, it says in verse 14. So we see that the Holy Spirit would be known uh, by us as uh, that sovereign spirit of truth that comes from Jesus Christ to represent Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 11 is a classic proof text that we do not want to leave out of this message. Uh, I know you know it, but I want to read it again for those who may not. And the scriptures say in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 11, But all these, that is all these different uh, gifts, worketh that one and the self same spirit. There's only one and self same spirit that worketh all the various diversities of operations and the differences of administrations in the church. But all these worketh that, that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally. Read me the last three words. That's the sovereignty right there. That's the sovereignty of the Holy Spirit because uh, this is the spirit of truth. This is the spirit of Christ. This is the spirit of God. This is the spirit that Jesus prayed the Father that he would send, and he did. This is a gift, uh, a wedding present from uh, Christ to his bride. And so he is one and the self, uh, same God as the Father and the Son. They're not, you know, I, I don't know how to understand it. I don't know anybody knows how to approach it by reason or logic. But you can cut a pie up into three pieces and take one piece out and... Uh, You've, you've diminished the pie, but you can't do that with, with God. Each, each person is completely and fully God, and uh, God is not diminished by one being on earth and other than being in heaven. Uh, there's a vastness to this, and like I say, if it's not supernatural, it's really not natural at all. It's not the natural religion. It's not what it's supposed to be. I want to go back, if you don't mind, to John chapter 8, <clears throat> to the book of John. I want to go back to the book of John, and then John chapter 8, and just read some scriptures that I looked up for you, <clears throat> and give you some understanding of God speaking to us. We read that portion in Isaiah chapter 30, and it gave us some understanding of God saying, this is the way, walk ye herein. Uh, to the uh, to those who in verse 44 he says are of your father the devil one of the things he uh, he shows that is uh, a trait that they have is in verse 43 of John 8 why do you not understand my speech and why is it that they cannot understand his speech even because you cannot hear my word now did they literally physically hear his word yes but did they spiritually hear the Holy Spirit manifesting to them a revelation of Jesus Christ? No. Then when he speaks of this, he's talking about you cannot hear the word of the Spirit. And it's not may not, it is cannot. It's not a term of permission, it's a term of ability. And the not 
added on to it means it's a term of inability. They just simply can't do it. John chapter 10 and verse number 25. John 10, 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. All right, what's the characteristic of the true sheep? We just found out in John 8, 43, what's the characteristic uh, of, can we just say goats, uh, of the reprobate? All right, they can't hear. All right, what's the characteristic of the sheep? John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Christ's knowing his sheep is included right in the center of their hearing and following. It is not that I know Christ. It is that Christ knows me. Paul stops himself when he writes to one of the churches, after that you had known the Lord, dash, or, you know, rather you were known of the Lord. Then he goes on to say what he's got to say. So God's knowing you is that which causes you to have ears to hear and feet to follow him. This is not optional. This is absolute. Go back to verse 3 in chapter 10. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. It is said that over in the east they can put several different flocks in one uh, fold, uh, one sheep coat over there. The, the town may have a place where the shepherds can come in and put their sheep safely in by night, and all the flocks are just mingled together. You say, well, how do they separate them? Those sheep will only follow their own shepherd's voice. They open the gate, and their shepherd starts calling them in his unique way, and none but his sheep come out, and all of his sheep come out without the mixing of one. That's, that's amazing. But you see, God invented sheep so they could do that, so you sheep could understand how you do that. You got that, didn't you? Yes. Good, because I don't think I can say it again. <laughs> Verse 4, And when he putteth his own sheep, when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. Why? For they know his voice. Isn't that good? Yeah. Don't you like that? Look, look at John uh, 16, 13. And we're going to go back to John 14, 10. So if you run by chapter 14, stick your finger in there. John 16, 13. Verse 12, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Well, that means we're not ever going to know them because if we can't bear them now, you're fixing to leave and we can't hear you say it. Oh, yes. Look at the next verse. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not... Speak of himself. That means he is going to speak, but he won't ever speak of himself. I am very, very cautious about these people who are always talking about they have the Spirit. Because the Spirit don't talk about himself. They may have a Spirit, but they don't have the Spirit. Because the Spirit will not allow you to speak of him. He speaks only of Christ. Listen. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear... Now, that really gets to me. You know, that's a communion between, and how do I say it, between God and God yeah. that I don't know anything about. But whatsoever he shall hear, uh, that shall he speak. Who is it talking to the Spirit? Where is the Spirit's ear? What language do they speak in? How is it that He speaks and when does He speak before uh, He speaks to me? I don't know. But I believe the Bible. The Spirit hears first. That's all He speaks. And He will 
show you things to come, and the, the whole thing is he shall glorify me. Go back to 14.10. John chapter 14.10. I'm going to keep y'all looking at, uh, flipping back and forth looking at scriptures because if any of you banana pudding eaters go to sleep, Norm's going to throw a songbook at you. John 14.10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Listen. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. Wait a minute. We just read that the Holy Spirit hears and therefore he speaks. So he doesn't speak of himself. Now listen. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. There is a holy communion in the, in the persons of the Trinity that issue forth from the Father himself. And the Lord Jesus Christ perceived and knew what the Father wanted said, so he said it. But, and I kind of understand that, but who tells the Spirit and what is it that he's hearing it's unbelievable before he speaks to me. Now, I'm trying to get you thoroughly confused, and I want to give you one little ray of light and one little clarity and hope. Here we go. Now, in all of that vast confusion that led you out into a no man's land, the, the Spirit, the Father, and the Son communicating one with another, just can't comprehend it. But one thing you do know now is God does speak. What we just learned was we don't know how God speaks. We don't know how the Father communicates the Son, how the Son communicates the Spirit, and how the Spirit hears, and who, well, you, who, which one he hears, who he hears, and how does he speak to us. But the whole thing rests on this. There is some hearing and speaking done by the eternal God. Right? And therefore, you sheep know his voice. That's just the way that it is. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Verses 14 and 15. Now here's an absolute. You want a rule to lay down on your life? You want a ruler to find out how you stand with God? Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. What can you conclude? Number one, the sons of God are led by the Spirit. Number two, all they that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. That's absolute. All right, verse 15. Now, let me clarify for you, he says, who I am not talking about. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. If you are led by guilt or bondage or fear, it's not the Holy Spirit. For there is therefore now no what in Christ Jesus? Condemnation. Condemnation. All right. So being led by the Spirit of God, you need to know what the Spirit is not. We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received. Here's the spirit you are to listen to. The spirit of adoption... If the spirit of adoption is in you, what comes out of your heart? Whereby we cry, Abba Father. When the doctor grabs that little old infant by the ankles and holds him up and whacks his backside, out comes that, that, that cry. What's that cry of? It's a cry of life. And, and dear soul, it means that he has breath. Breath speaks of the spirit. And so it's the same way. God invented that to show you the work of the Spirit. When God births you and brings you out of the, and I think it calls it the womb of the church, when God births you into the kingdom of God, then there is a cry because breath comes in you, the Holy Spirit. 
And what is that cry? My father, my father. Uh, he said, go down to the street called Straight, and there's a fellow down there named Saul of Tarsus. Wait a minute, Lord, don't you know who that is? That's a murderer. That's a, th that's a terrorist. He said, behold, he prayeth. The Spirit is in him, so the words are coming out, and he's saying stuff that only a Christian can say because they who are led of the Spirit are the sons of God. And he is a son of God because God don't, don't say everybody prays. He says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much with God. So God ain't lying when he says uh, Paul, Saul of Tarsus is praying. If God says he's praying, God's hearing his prayer. And it's being done by the Spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost, right? right? So that's how he knew he was a Christian. Dear soul, God's involved in your breathing. Uh, physical, yes, I'm, I wasn't talking about that. But in your life, in, your, in the flow of life through and from you, you are, you, you are, you are given life. Man, dear soul, listen, he didn't... He said he breathed in his breath the breath of life and he became a living soul. Man doesn't have a soul. He is a soul. Right. Amen. And that from the very nostrils of God himself. That's the way that it is. Galatians 4, 6. Galatians 4, 6. Familiar scripture. Yeah, but we hadn't read it today. Galatians 4, 6. And because ye are sons, and not in order to become sons, but because ye are sons, you're elected in Christ before the foundation of the world. God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts. What is that that gives you life? The Spirit of God's Son is in my heart. Whereby... In your heart's crying, Abba, Father. There it is again. Uh, let's look on. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you understand walking in the Spirit to be obeying that Spirit that is within you, and you can get your feet and your mind and your hands and your... You know, and your tongue and your eyes and all that in conjunction with God in that spirit, then you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. What does that mean? You mean I can do anything I want to? Yeah, but you want to, I ain't going to let you do nothing but that which is holy. We're not under the law for justification. We're, un we're under grace. And why, how do I know that I'm under grace? Because I'm led by the Spirit. That's what the book said. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit. Here are the things that you will emit that will come forth from yourself as a result of the Spirit being in you. That fruit of the Spirit, and by the way, it's singular, and, and it says the works, plural of the flesh in verse 19, but this is the singular work of the Spirit. But look how manifold it is. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So we're trying to get that which is within us out to the surface so that we are conquering our Canaan. We're driving out our Philistines and our Canaanites out of this land God has given us, our being, so that we can bring this back under the authority of King Jesus and bring all of this that, that sin had corrupted and ruined back into an orderly state under the Lord Jesus Christ by His blood atonement and by His Spirit's indwelling. God didn't say, go do it and then leave you alone. He said, go do it and then I'll do it in you. I'll do it with you and I'll do it for you. But you got to do it. That's what he told Moses and Joshua 
Every place the sole of your foot touches, I'll give it to you. Here's a sword. I thought you said you're going to give it to me. Uh, we are. I am. Fight. Dear soul, that's our responsibility to make sure that every avenue of the kingdom of self that Christ has conquered gets permeated with obedience to Christ. If, if, if a king goes and conquers another country, it's a long time before the coinage of the ram gets down to every hamlet and every village. It takes a while. It takes a while for every street in every community in every city in all of that country that he's conquered to be able to have the influence of that king diffuse itself down through all of it. And dear soul, that's your responsibility. The king has conquered you. Now, let, let it all come down to every part of your being so that every thought is brought to the obedience of Christ. You ain't going to do that if you keep sowing fig leaves together. You're going to have to own your sin in front of God. I don't want to tell him. He already knows. I don't want to admit it. Now we got some. Now, now you're getting down to the real problem. I'm too embarrassed to tell him. He already knows it. Tell him what you are. And you know what? You say, well, that's kind of my pet sin. I kind of want to keep that one. Tell God that. You don't get honest, you ain't going to get rid of it. Say, Lord, I don't want to ask you to get rid of that one. I kind of like it. Be honest with God. You want, you want to be conquered by the Spirit? You want to really worship? Help the Spirit of God get into every, every aspect of your, uh, of your motives. Why do you do things? Brother Al and I were talking about that at lunch. We can't be motivated with the benevolence fund because we can take it off our taxes. Come on now. Amen. That's true. That ain't no willing heart. I am going to take it off my taxes because Uncle Sam's after me and all the money he can get out of it. And this is legal, so I'm going to use it. But that ain't why I'm giving it. We got, we got to bring the Spirit to bear upon our motives, upon every aspect of us, and, 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 and cooperate with Jesus as he conquers us. So if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, you remember that word forbidden? That's a that's quite a word. In verse six, and we're forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Uh, the Holy Spirit is in control of all evangelism. In Acts chapter eight, in verse number twenty-nine, I want you to read a verse. You said I've read it a million times. I know it. Well, this is a million and one, but this time let's read it with contemplation with meditation then the spirit said now you don't you don't need to read too fast all right then at that precise moment not a spirit or some spirit but the spirit capital s he has a voice if he didn't expect to be heard, understood, and obeyed, he wouldn't have said. So he's saying in order that there might be a hearing and a doing. And I know all that stuff about if a tree fell in the forest and there wasn't no man around, would it make any noise? Of course it would. But the Lord is making sure that there is a receiver for this transmitter and the Spirit is going to say it, and Philip is going to hear. I saw a sign in the barbershop the other day, stop up your ears, ladies. It said, if a man said something and a woman wasn't around, would he still be wrong? All the women said yes. Okay. Back to my preaching, please. Then the Spirit said, 
unto Philip. So here's somebody saying, and here's somebody that was, it was said to. And what was said? Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Very specific. Very pointed. And what did Philip do? And Philip ran thither. He, he got the right chariot at the right time because he's in the right place because the Holy Spirit don't make no mess. So the Spirit spake. There's no doubt about it. Verse 39. Verse 39 of Acts chapter 8. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And, and, the, Phil, and the eunuch sent out 40 men uh, three days and three nights looking for No. They did that about old Elijah, didn't they? And Elisha said, don't go looking for him. He ain't here. And, and it don't say he went on his way squalling because his favorite preacher got took, it, took away from him. It said he went on his way rejoicing. So Philip didn't get set up as an idol to the eunuch. And the eunuch got everything Philip had that he was supposed to share with him. And God the Holy Spirit came out to the good in both of them's life, and they're all well and good because they did exactly what the Spirit told them to do at the time He told them to do it. Now, in, in Acts chapter 10, in verse 19, you got a Jewish apostle on top of a hot roof, and his stomach's growling. And he's dreaming about something to eat, and a sheet comes down three times with something to eat on it, and he refuses it. And God said, don't call that common and unclean what I've cleansed. And then in verse number 19, listen at this. While Peter thought on the vision, the, here we go again, the Spirit, Acts 10, 19, said unto him, behold, that means look at yonder, three men seek Thee. Now that's pretty specific. Three men seek thee, all right? What is he to do? Verse 20. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, and button your lip. Don't say a word, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Now here's the Holy Spirit coming at a time when it just ain't opportune for Peter to be listening to something that ain't saying, come and get it, you know. If somebody ain't ringing the old uh, 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 triangle and saying, come and get it, you know, it's time to eat, he don't want to hear it. But this is when the Spirit speaks. And he tells him specifically who's down there, how many they are, what he's supposed to think, or not think in this case, and, and that he is to go with them. And, and then the Spirit tells Peter, these three Gentiles were not sent by Cornelius, they were sent by me. Isn't that something? So we see the Holy Spirit does speak. Chapter 11 and verse 12. Peter's back in Jerusalem. The thing is over with Cornelius. He's got to come up with some uh, explanation to these legalistic Jews that won't know why come you ate with uncircumcised. And in verse 12 of chapter 11 it says, And the Spirit bade me go with them doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. So Peter, the three men, and two more, or maybe three more, if he's not including himself in the six brethren, we all went down to Cornelius' house. Why? Because the Holy Spirit said to. And he proves that the Holy Spirit said to, because while I was yet speaking, the Holy Spirit falls on them and grants them the evidence of, of, of the Holy Ghost being in them. And so the Jews could not doubt it. What are we saying? We're trying to say, dear soul, that God speaks to his people by the Holy Spirit. Acts 13, 3. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they being sent forth by the church? No. No. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed. And so it says, separate me, verse 2, separate me. The Holy Ghost said, separate me. It, they were separated unto the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 1 and verse 13. 
Don't let anybody take away from you the supernatural aspect of God Almighty. Romans chapter 1 and verse 13. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oft times I purposed to come unto you, but was let, that means hindered, I was stopped hitherto, that I might have some fruit among, among you also, even uh, uh, as among other Gentiles. So he says, you know what? I even tried to come to y'all at Rome, but was hindered. So this hindering of Paul going to Asia here in Acts 16 is not unique. God is determining where he's to be and when he's supposed to be. My, uh, the steps of a good man, not the path, but the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So we see that God is, is abs in absolute control of all of this. Now, I want to get down to Lydia. Uh, and I'm just trying to be brief and giving you an overview of this thing. I'm kind of skipping on. And fast forwarding this thing, Brother Jamie read us this morning in Acts chapter 19, if you want to go there, Acts chapter 19, verse 8, and he went into the synagogue and spoke, ba spoke Bailey, spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when various, divers, diverse, were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way, Christianity, before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, dis disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Verse 26, you want a different testimony of that all right let's go over here to Ephesus to this guy Demetrius the silversmith and let him tell you Acts 19 26 moreover you see in here that not alone at Ephesus but almost throughout all Asia this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people saying that they be no gods which are made with hands so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship it. So, dear soul, when the Spirit says don't, don't get mad. Don't quench the Spirit, whatever you do. Don't grieve the Spirit. Don't go over in a set, go on in a self-determined way in in something God has said. Okay, blanket authority. You shall be filled with power after the Holy Ghost and come upon you, and you shall preach the gospel to every nation. Blanket authority. All all authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. Therefore, go ye preach the gospel to every creature. All right, I can go anywhere. The Lord told me the world is my is is the place where I'm to preach the whole world. Ah. But never, ever without the personal guidance of the Holy Ghost. Don't turn to it. I'll just quote it for you. 1 Corinthians 4.20 For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So all the messages and sermons that I hear that may be gun barrel straight... I don't necessarily get all rejoicing and all up in the air about them, although I thank God for truth. But I'd like to hear the power. I'd like to experience the power, the spirit of it. You know, we have come to the place by publishing so many books and by so much teaching that we have made the Sovereign Grace Movement gun barrel straight but it's almost just as empty we are highly educated we can pass all the tests but dear friend the, the whole movement I'm talking about as a whole has little power with God the spirit the, the, listen, it, it, the kingdom of God is not in word but in power, not in word, 
but in power. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come. So you need to follow the Holy Ghost. Quit letting the missions map be one that controls you. We don't have no pins here, so we got to go there. Dear son, we, listen, we better follow the Holy Ghost. That's what it's all about. Now, her charity, as we said this morning in Acts chapter 16, and I had you read me the last sentence in Acts 16 and verse 15, and it says, and you read for me, and she constrained us. So here's a woman that is so charitable. Here's a woman that has so much to contribute, but yet it is not just flaunted in front of everybody. She didn't shout, uh, sound her trumpets when she gave her alms, but she wasn't going to let even the Apostle Paul or uh, the prophet Silas keep her back from giving what she wanted to give. She wanted, she, she, she equated this thing with her faithfulness to the Lord. I read that to you in verse 15. If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And then it says she constrained us. She was not going to let it go. This woman wanted her inward change of life with the love and the richness of Christ in her heart to be expressed in an outward way so that there could be a confirmation. He that doeth truth cometh to the light that he might see that these deeds are wrought in God. John 3, I think it's 19. You'll have to look it up. So you want that outward expression of the inward indwelling of the Spirit. Now, go to Philippians 4. Philippians 4. And verse 15. Philippians 4, 15. Is that what I want? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> now ye Philippians, where do Philippians dwell? In Philippi. Why is it called Philippi? Because it was named by Philip of Macedonia. Macedonia. You guessed it. All right. <laughs> Which is actually Greece. Greece. Yeah, you guessed that too. <laughs> so ye Philippians, and that's where she uh, was, ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, now he ain't talking about unto you is born this day and a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He ain't talking about way back there. He said, I'm talking about when the gospel began in Philippi. Where and with whom did it begin in Philippi? That Lydia woman. Okay. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving three words. It was unknown to Paul to receive anything from any church except the church that had begun with the salvation of Lydia. You cannot sit there and tell me she was not a strong and powerful influence in the spirit of that church because she had, she had constrained you because it had to do with her personal faith. If, 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 if you judge me to be uh, faithful in the Lord, let me entertain you and let me give you my hospitality. They said, she said, now don't, don't don't give me no lip. Get in here. She constrained us. She was at Philippi. She had left Thyatira. And where's Thyatira? And don't make me say that word again. It's in what? Asia. Asia. Because who said? Jesus said in Revelation 1.11. But Paul wasn't allowed to go to Asia. He had to go to Philippi. Why? Because Lydia was there and because 
She was so thrilled to hear the gospel, she wanted to give all that she had to support the gospel in the Apostle Paul. And here is the church at Philippi being put in the inspired word of God for you in 2013 to read today that that was the only church that communicated, gave alms, gave charity to the Apostle Paul. Isn't that amazing? Now, purple was evidently a very, maybe rare, I don't know, but it was a very desirous commodity. There was a difference. Some of them used squishy worms, and they squished the worms and got the purple. But some of them used roots, and don't expect me to tell you all of that because I read it and it went in one here and eight and out the other. Uh, but nonetheless, Lydia had a business, and she leaves Thyatira in Asia and comes to Philippi in Greece, in Macedonia. What do you think that was? As the old country boy said, business. What did he say? Business. She went there for business. But that wasn't why the Lord got her there. He would have her to move to a whole different country. Move her business. Have you ever had to move a business? Maybe she left the home office back there in Thyatira and she came over here to start a new satellite you know country a company rather not country company whatever that's where God sent Paul because that's where her livelihood was and he won't put a love in your heart you better listen to me. I might never say this again. You ain't never heard me say it before. He won't put a love in your heart that he don't put a dollar in your pocket to give to Jesus. You ain't going to be left out. God's going to see to it. If you ain't got but a nickel, bless God, you'll give it for Jesus. I, don't, I ain't talking about give me your money. I'm talking about for God so loved that he gave. gave and you can't express love without giving. And God said, I don't want you to meet her in Asia. She's moving her, com her company and all that over there, over there to, to uh, Philippi. You meet her over there. Because she's going to base her salvation and you judging her salvation on you allowing her to give to you. Holy moly's Batman. I ain't never seen nothing like this. Have you? If ye count me faithful in the Lord, not only come to my house for one meal, but abide there. You know what they say? Good friends and fish start stinking after three days. You're just as good ready for them to leave as you was for them to come after a while, right? Not this woman. Because she would gang up with women down at the washer hole, washerwoman's hole, just to pray and ask God. You know, I know what she's praying for. You know what she's praying for? Send me a preacher. That's what messed up Paul. One woman over there praying. He can't sleep at night. You're driving me sane. I can't sleep. So he gets a vision. I'm frustrated. Everywhere I try to go, doors shut on me. But I'm the apostle to the Gentile. I'm to go into all the world. Yeah, but Lydia's over there praying. Well, is she praying in a synagogue? No. Is she praying in a church? No. Is she praying with an anointed pastor that, 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 like Timothy? No. Well, where is she praying? Down at the riverside. Oh, Lord, I'm so frustrated. I don't care. Let's go. Ain't that something? This woman, you ever read Revelation 8? where God makes it be silent in heaven for the space of half an hour so that he can hear the prayers of the saints poured out before him. Son, if there ain't no angels flapping their wings, and Paul's going to sit still too till God can hear Lydia praying. Glory to God! Amen. 
You better not quit praying, you Lydia's you. God stopped heaven to hear her prayer, and he shut down the great apostle on earth and said, wait a minute, this woman right here and the spirit of this woman is going to fill the church of Philippi. And they're going to support him. And he's going to be glad he sat down on that rock by the river because ain't nobody else giving him no banana pudding. Amen. Except them. Right. <laughs> Do you see it? Amen. I like to have a running fit. And that was in Tyrone, Georgia <laughs> when I first read this. And I began to see it. God began to open it up to me. Ain't that beautiful? Listen, listen, verse 16, Philippians 4, 16. We're fixing to go home. I know, I know you think I ain't never going to quit, but I am. Listen, for even in Thessalonica, ye sent once, next two words, Amen. and again, unto what? Paul said, I've had to learn how to do without things that are necessary. He said, but you know what? That church not even knowing my necessities. They didn't sin just once. They sent a second time when he was out of everything and needed. It was Lydia's spirit in that church that provided for him. Look in chapter 4 and verse 2. I told you I'd show you this. I can't prove it, but you can't prove it ain't. I do know that Lydia is a place and not a person. And I tried to explain it to you in my old ignorant country bumpkin way. Used to call people Tex. You know, they used to call people slim, lefty, and all that. You don't hear none of that no more because that's politically incorrect. But anyhow, used to call somebody Tex. This is the Oklahoma kid. What's his name? I don't know. Is this Oklahoma kid? Her name was that Lydia woman. It was a it was a country. It was a providence. That's where Thyatira was located. I hope I'm still right. But listen, it has been strongly suggested, and I this is not me. I read it, and I'm just going to tell you. In uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 2, I beseech you, Odeus, and beseech Sintichi, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. It has been strongly suggested by somebody that I feel like can strongly suggest that it is a great possibility <laughs> that it may be, perhaps, one of them was the woman we call Lydia. Her name don't even get mentioned in the, in the book of Philippians as Lydia. She don't want any attention. She just wants to give to Christ and have those that know Christ identify with her to confirm that she really does know the Lord. Wow. 